Welcome to the 1999 Royal Institution Christmas Lectures. Now, 1999 is a very special year for the Royal Institution. Because it's not only a millennium, it's also 200 years since the founding of the Royal Institution itself. So what better subject to talk about than time? So let me start by asking you a question. What is time? What is time? Does anyone have any suggestions? Okay, let me make it a little bit easier. What is the time? Any, any answers? Oh, wonderful. Okay, we had some very accurate answers for the time. So this is very weird because we know how to measure the time but we don't know what time is. So what do we do when we're stuck? we look for the definition in a dictionary. And here I have a dictionary definition, but I need a volunteer to read it out. Would you stand up? Your name is? Jennifer. Jennifer. Jennifer, could you read out in a nice, loud, clear voice the definition of time? Time is the period in which events happen. Time is the period in which events happen. Thank you very much. But we have a problem. What is the period? Jennifer, on the next page, I think you'll find the definition of the period. Period is the time taken for events to happen. So period is the time taken for events to happen, but time is the period in which events happen. Thank you very much, Jennifer. So to be honest, this definition is just useless. But that's not such a surprise. Because time has puzzled great thinkers since the beginning of civilization. Well, let's just think about it. In space, we can move forwards and backwards. And we can go sideways, and we can even stand still. But we can't do any of these things in time. We're just carried along with now, or now. And we can remember the past, well, bits of it, and try and guess, or predict even, the future. But all we really know is now. So maybe we should look are what some of the great thinkers have said about time in the past. In fact, it was St. Augustine in the 5th century who was one of the first people to write about time. And what St. Augustine said was, what then is time? If no one asks me, I know. But if I wish to explain it to one that asks, I know not. So what he's saying is he knew what time is as long as he didn't have to explain it to somebody. So basically, he didn't have any idea either. Well, in 1799, when the Royal Institution was founded, they probably would have agreed with him. But what we're going to see in these lectures is that 200 years of science have completely changed our notion of what time actually is. Now the fact that I'm standing here one year after last year's lecturer, and I certainly feel one year older, means that whatever a time is, it seems to be moving steadily forwards. But why forwards? And how steady? Well, this is the first question that we're actually going to look at. And we're going to do two crucial time experiments. 
for which I need a volunteer. Could you come up and help me? What's your name? Felicity. Felicity. Could you come over here, Felicity? We've got some very delicate apparatus here for measuring time. So, Felicity, would you pick up an egg, please? Would you hold your hand up off the tray? That's it. Get the angle right. Turn over your hand. Now open your hand. Well done, Felicity. <laughs> now, if you could stay with me. Stay with me. So Felicity's shown something that actually we knew would happen. The egg breaks when it falls. Now Felicity, that was the easy bit. Can you try and put this egg back together again? <laughs> of course you can't. Felicity he cannot put the egg back together again. Not with all the king's horses and all the king's men. You cannot put this egg back. Because eggs go one way. Eggs break one way. But it's not always so obvious. If you just stay with me, Felicity, we're going to see a piece of apparatus introduced to explain the laws of motion that are meant to predict everything in the universe. So, Felicity, if you come round here, I want you to just start off what is called Newton's cradle. Just pull the ball back and just set it off. Very nice. Now, I'm going to ask you the same question as I asked for the egg. Felicity, can you make this go backwards? You might want to come over here, so if we're going to do this backwards, let's try and make this run backwards. Pull the ball. Now, it looks pretty much the same. Thanks very much, Felicity. And if you're not convinced, if I come over here, you can see that when we look at Newton's cradle backwards, it doesn't look strange, unlike this. So if that piece of apparatus looks the same forwards and backwards, it must mean that Newton's laws look the same forwards and backwards, and they do. And that's the problem. There's no direction of time in Newton's laws. So Sir Isaac Newton, one of our most famous scientists, didn't really have much to say about the direction of time. But we shouldn't be so hard on him. Because even as we're here today, there is no known fundamental law of motion in science that has a direction of time in it. And yet eggs break, we get older, so where is this direction of time coming from? Well, oddly enough, the story starts here, in the Royal Institution, 200 years ago, with the founder of the Royal Institution himself, Count Rumford. Now, Count Rumford was very interested in heat and motion. Well, in fact, that's not so surprising. Everybody was interested in heat and motion. It was the big topic of the time. Because the world was on the dawn of the Industrial Revolution. 